There is evidence of an annual fair at Water Row from Roman times. It has always been linked to the local business community. First, agriculture, trading sheep and hens with market stalls, games and a fairgrounds. Later, when Govan was a centre of weaving, the fair was run by the Govan weavers. During the era of shipbuilding, it filled Elder Park from end to end with carousels and helter-skelters and was a project of the Old Govan Club. The tradition of the sheep's heat was born in 1756 when a young farmhand approached the local minister for his daughter's hand in marriage. Telling the young man that he was not good enough for his daughter, the minister sent the young man packing only to have him return in the dead of night and wreak revenge by chopping the head from the body of the minister's prized ram. That night, the young farmhand and his pals paraded the ram's head on a pole through the streets of Govan. And so, the tradition of the procession, led by the ram's head, was born. The fair is, like a lot of um, traditional fairs, it incorporates a procession, a fun fair, um, there are stalls. Uh, there's a lot of engagement from the likes of marching bands, floats from local companies. In, in my mind, or in my words, Govan Fair is a celebration of the history of Govan. There was a weaving village here at Govan, and the area around Govan Cross would have had houses, houses down the water row, which would have been weavers' cottages, and there would have been fishing on the Clyde, there would have been a ferry here at Govan. Uh, there was a ford a little bit downstream between Govan and White Inch. In the 19th century, the channel of the Clyde was narrowed and deepened with dredging to allow ships to come right up to Glasgow. When they found coal and ironstone in the area, it became a centre for heavy engineering and shipbuilding as well. Shipbuilding really started in the middle of the 19th century and over time uh, a group of shipyards developed here. Fairfield shipyard was the nearest one just next door to here and further down there was Stevens Yard at Lint House. Just a little bit upstream from here, Harland and Wolfe had a yard and there were shipyards on the opposite side of the, of the Clyde as well at Scotston. These caused a very rapid increase in population at Govan. The streets were packed, people were hard up then these days and it was something to look forward to that night. Govan Fair night was the first Friday in June. One of Matt stayed in Langlands Road and we used to watch the Govan Fair from our first floor window and it was quite a sight to see. Probably the thing that sticks out most is the procession it seemed to go on forever. It was more like a circus procession. And this old man, as I say, maybe he wasn't an old man, but to me he was an old man in these days. And he used to dance in front of the procession with the sheep's head, which still gets carried on to this day. You had the cycle shops in Govan who came out and they had their big tall one wheel bikes and they would follow the procession and you had the floats and the bands and it just seemed to go on and on and on. The people then were involved in a lot of the businesses, were involved in a lot of the police fire brigade. Parade with the Salvation Army, Voice Association, BB, all marching in the street as well. And the big, big flotilla lorries with all different designs on them. Now, to me, that was a Govan Fair. We had a procession of the Govan, uh, the Queen. She would come along the Govan Road, the head to the park, and then they'd go over there. Because people say, oh, it's not great, it's not this, it's that. But when you're a wee kid watching this lovely procession, it's wonderful. It's like going to Florida now for some of them. They think it's, you know, Disneyland's wonderful, which it is. It was always a happy time for everybody. Now, there's been problems with the Govan Fair in terms of the old traditions migrating into new traditions have created problems. I say maybe about 20 years ago, I remember it was getting smaller and smaller. It was all about majorettes, nothing, nothing against the majorettes, but like, even when I was young and my kids were young, there was floats like for the Southern General with a float, shipyards had floats, different schemes had floats, you know, uh, but that just all kind of bit died away. Years ago, the procession was a lot bigger. I used to take about an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter to pass you. Now you're lucky if it takes 10 minutes. There's more dance schools now than there is anything else, whereas before there used to be a whole array of different processions. People were more interested in the actual parade, whereas today it's more like a few floats 
Elder Park and it's basically the shows that's there to make as much money as they can. But the actual people in government have just not been involved. And I think it's got to be one of the things, I think maybe in five years time we won't have such a thing as the government fair going on. Obviously we did a lot of floats and things, people in what lorries, and now with health and safety um, it's kind of hard to put people in lorries and kids without worrying about the health and safety aspect. I didn't have that problem in the 30s, 40s and 50s. No, very, I, I can't remember ever being anybody falling off a float. Our older generation, it was always taken on that this was, as I say, like a national holiday. Everybody get involved in it. Government's multicultural, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that should reflect on the government fair. Do you know what I mean? Maybe have floats for different cultures, I don't know. I mean, I suppose that people that have maybe moved in from different cultures, they really don't know anything about it. But Schools could learn them all then. In my clothes, there's eight families in my clothes and there's uh, four different nationalities. When we were young, Govan was basically Glasgow people. But now you've got people from all around the world. And these people, I don't think, are getting involved in it. It depends who's willing to come along on the night. Um, but it was a good turnout. You know, obviously they had shows and different things. With the circus last year, Zippo Circus came to the park and that was a good thing. It was exciting and it was very fun to do because you got to see all the different things that happened in and around Govan and I've, ne I've been to Govan Fair before but I never knew there was that many like clubs and stuff. When I just started watching it and that, like going down to see it at Elder Park, it was like not boring but it wasn't as fun as it was when I was actually in it. It's nice, it's a nice atmosphere most of it when all of them are coming through or when you go to they like, got on the rides everyone's always happy it's always a good atmosphere so it felt like a sort of big community event um, but i think there were more people in the parade than spectators the waltz was the best all the games and the rides are probably everyone's favorite meeting with your pals if you don't talk to them outside of school it's fun meeting with them again well i'm not really sure if there's anything like they could do that was better because I think it's already one of the best things ever. There's a lot of voluntary workers, a lot of people doing voluntary work which is great but most times nowadays people won't paid to do things so years ago it was just finding the money to do what we would love to have done you know and obviously with the help of the people in the community um, dance groups, bands, um, all doing voluntary stuff. Um, that's how it kind of, you know, evolved really. It's all put down to funding, the lack of funding. Over the years, as I say, Govan has changed from being where this used to be the main road in Govan. We've had to change the route quite a few times to incorporate the different bits that have changed. When they go around in the car and then the like, people that's watching needs to follow it, we don't need to, but like some, most people do. Maybe make that route a little bit shorter so that they didn't have to walk as far. Like, because it's from like Elder Park all the way back round to Elder Park. And then, like, people don't always walk that far, they just like go and then drop into the houses on the way there. They do do a lot of things for the kids, but unfortunately, the older kids, they ruin it. They, they find it like so they don't celebrate the government fair for what the government fair is. They just see it as an excuse to drink, take drugs, and fight with each other in the park. Now that's not what the government fair is about. The government fair itself isn't the problem. It's it's always been really good. It's the people they don't know how to conduct themselves. But I don't think that should be highlighted as compared to all the positive things that government fair does. It's a shame because obviously some of the kids that's their highlight. They've been looking forward to it all year. It's their kind of five minutes of fame kind of thing. I've never heard anybody lately come along go all happily talking about it. You should not tie everyone together because there's a, a huge amount of young kids, particularly teenagers like these guys here, that are very positive examples of what Coven can achieve and what Coven is. Last year they had a Polish queen and she was booed, hit with eggs. Just because she was Polish, people didn't believe that somebody that's not from Coven should be representing the Coven queen, which I don't believe is true. I mean, if the person lives in Govan and they apply that they're going to school in Govan, everybody that goes to school is entitled to kind of go, join in, and be part of the Govan, the Govan Fair. And I'm like, it's a child. Why are adults being so, I don't know, bitter towards somebody else having a shot at the Queen? It's not a good example, is it?
If they want to do it, they want to do it. It shouldn't make any difference what religion they are or what nationality. It's kind of dying a death, really. But that's why it's dying a death, because people's not contributing to it, do you know what I mean? I just take it now that this is a, because of the way technologies went, nobody's wanting to do it, they're not wanting to go out, they don't want to be actually involved in anything that's happening in their own community. They don't see that it's uh, all family orientated. I mean, then you people go, ah, but we can't go because we don't have the money to go. We can't. It's not very nice to take your children down to a park when there's shows and amusements, and you can't give them any money to go anything. So a lot of people stay back for that reason. The stage was uh, very small. It was just like a little square with a, like a little tent thing over the top of it, and then like there was a big chair for the Queen, and then there was like like the organisers of that on it too, and then there was the two princesses, and then like the two princes. So. Um, like the, we were all sort of squished and then um, one of the princes nearly fell off because it was so small. <laughs> so small. It is a, a tradition, as I say, the kids maybe don't appreciate it the same way that, as I say, they're not really taught about it in school. Unless it would take uh, the government fair into the 21st century and make it all lights, dazzling, then they're not going to catch the kids' attention. They're using the little girl from school, or this Polish girl, or this... Chinese get along and, and so on and they're trying to spread it around the community like that but that's not what's going to bring people together. They've got to get the people to come out of their house and actually go along and get in a group and stand, talk to one another and get themselves involved and then people get to know and they start to meet other friends other than their own community. And then it becomes a celebration because then they start celebrating government fair, they start celebrating the fact that they live in government. And you create a community and people will start to change and government will change. Finding a new relevance for it. You know, finding out what it means for people here and how they would like to take it forward. And because you can have a fun fair, you can have stalls and what have you. But essentially, anything is only really as good as the level of participation that you get in it. Involving all your local businesses. Go round and see them. Nobody goes round and see them anymore. Well, I've sent them an email. Make it personal. I think it's very important that you keep the fair going on throughout the year and that you can uh, involve as many volunteers as possible, put up site projects that you can sort of put into the fair or the parade later on so, so it just won't be a, an event that the people are waiting for. Give opportunities for them to work. It's the people who are organisers got to organise it in such a way the people want to come and create the atmosphere. I mean the organisations only, I think they have a meeting every other week but I think it's only for themselves because I mean they don't listen to the, the community. Obviously the Govern Fair is a community based thing. Not enough people realise how important it is to be part of. New blood, new ideas is maybe the best way forward for the Govern Fair. The shows, oh, the shows the again like see at the start like we're coming mm -hmm. from real little, the I would always imagine like the, all the shows that came through as well, you would always remember there was hundreds, but not as much anymore. We'd like to see that come back. Maybe add like more vibes or that, and then like make more little show things that you can go see, like surrounded around the park because it's only based on one little area. Whereas if they surrounded it, more people would like walk to different bits and see different things. Have events that they can participate in, or have events that they can watch, as opposed to merely having something that requires them to spend money. You need variety, and you need, you need different things because not everyone wants the same thing. Well, we could actually have a stage at Government Cross as well, a stage where they actually crown the Queen, but also have it for entertainment as well. Where they've got local pop groups, I feel like, where they could have them involved, and that would attract people. Try and find ways of getting different sections of government to participate in a sort of friendly competition to come up with the best floats or the best costumes, the best music. Um, I think I'd like to see more, not younger children, but older children getting involved because I think it's a good thing for them to do and it would be a good way to get involved with the community. The fire brigade, the police, hospital, the BE systems, all these people can be more involved in actually participating and putting votes and things like that in, but they don't seem to be interested anymore. Because there's some fantastic organisations doing fantastic work out there, um, we'd just like to see more of it. Urban Roots getting involved, the Pre-Shell Trust, 
um, the different groups down at Portal, the different groups down at uh, the, the Pierce Institute. Uh, I think we could do a lot more for people who have got different needs. So I'd, I'd actually encourage everybody to look out for places such as this and the Govan Fair is the prime medium for doing that. Pierce yes, Institute could open its doors to people Govan and Govan Fair where they can go, they could have sort of seminars where people could go and actually learn about Govan, our Govan's history and what it was about. The church could open its doors because it's got historical things inside that, that people might be interested in. What's the fire station could open the stores and let people go in and see what they're about. People might become more involved and bring their culture to it as well because they must be able to go on stage and do something, whether it's a group that plays their own instruments and that sort of thing, you can bring another atmosphere and again you're encouraging them, they're getting them out onto the street as well. The Govan Fair weekend they could take over the schools and say look, We'll have this as a kind of fun day at a school because for a start that, that park's just a no-go either. More advertising, but I'm saying maybe a month, six weeks in front, putting a launch on going like this is what's happening, uh, signs put up in the governing area. Get more involvement with schools, make it more worth the children's while, give them something to do, make that put them in charge, not put the adults in charge, put the children in charge. You get a group of children, you get somebody that's this kind of spokesperson. Somebody that's good at talking, somebody that's good at organising, you always get an organiser and amongst everything. And the next generation are going to take over from us, and they have to. If we don't give them good values and we pass bad values to them, what do we expect them to defend? They will defend the bad values. So we need to start advertising, promoting, enhancing, so that the younger generation will say, I want to be part of that. We want them to, to rehearse the whole of the year knowing fully well that they're going, to be, they're going to be an opportunity to show off to their community what they can do. I would get involved in it. If somebody came to me, do you want to fund us to do a flat blah, blah, I'll do it, no bother. I think that it should go on for 260 more years because it's such a government tradition and it happens every year and everybody always gets really excited for it and government without the government fair wouldn't be the same. And there's a lot, a lot of people that are so passionate about it. Uh, so maybe they could spread the word, you know. Uh, as I say, I keep going back to the multicultural thing. I think they can learn a lot about Govan through the Govan Fair. People are friendly. They are as Scottish people. They like laughing, joking, and liking music, dancing. This is also our culture. The same culture, I think. And they are friendly, exactly they are friendly. I'm a straight pigeon. This is my new neighbourhood. This is my loft. If anything needs to be good, I want to be part of the people who are doing it. Either I'm participating or on the board. It's nice because uh, if we do that, you will you will know about our culture or anything in our Iraq, and it's good for us and for you because you will know our country and you will know more about the Govan Fair and in Scotland. It's a celebration of Govan, um, a celebration of the people. The fact that Govan has such a rich history going from you know, the shipbuilding or even before the shipbuilding. So if you go down and you look at you know, all the beautiful churches down there as well. So it's the fact that Govan has this huge history that's there to be celebrated, that there's still some fantastic things still to happen or and are happening here, that we should be proud of that and we should celebrate that. And I think that's, in essence, what, what the Govan Fair is, is to, to celebrate exactly what's happening in the G, G51 area. To show what that we can we do, can like, all be nice, like it's, we can all get along. it's not like, yeah, probably, like, but a sense of humor. it shows that um, they can all put that together and put that out, and then it makes people happy, it gets morale up as well. I, oh, I, I love Gotham Fair now. I wouldn't want it to stop, I like it the way it is. <laughs> There are as many opinions about how the Govan Fair should go forward as there are people in Govan and there is enough passion, commitment and energy to keep it going for another few centuries to come. The Govan Fair is an annual platform for local businesses and organisations to show off who they are and what they contribute to Govan. It is also the time for Govan to collectively let its hair down. Local people coming together in recognition of a shared love of the place and its people. The challenge going forward is how to keep the essence of the fair, 
its Govan credentials and its purpose as an event that celebrates the best things about Govan and Govan people to make the lives of everyone better. From that 18th century schism with the church through the 19th century upset with the weavers, no one remembers what that one was about, and the 20th century falling out with the police because of gang fights and violence. The Govan Fair has been a magnet for the traditional Govan grudge. We love to fall out, we love to lay blame, and the Govan Fair is never as good as we remember it being when we were young. The current committee are the custodians of the fair, but they are not the Govan Fair. The Govan Fair Association and Glasgow City Council can only support the fair by providing a framework. What happens in the fair itself is up to its owners. That's you, the local businesses and people, particularly the young people, who choose to live here. How good it is today, tomorrow and in the future is entirely in your hands. So, over to you. What do you want to do? What do you want to get out of it? And what do you want to contribute to the Govan Fair on the first Friday of June this year? And if you want it to continue, then you've got to be involved. Because I love Govan. I really do. And I love Lunt House. I love where I am.